Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 250. I'm your host, Chris Britton, so let's go! Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including all of your latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch and co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. We like to normally start us off with what made us happy this week. What made you happy? So I don't know if you guys know this, but it's been about 10 years uh, since something monumentous uh, in occasion, something glorious happened, something that's graced the face of the earth with its excellence. And that was 10 years ago, the Pizone came into being. But <laughs> most importantly, recently, shut up, Chris, let me get through this. Most importantly, it came back. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 years, finally, the beautiful, overstuffed, super crust, mozzarella or parmesan, whatever cheese is on top, so beautiful and flaky, the Pizone is back. <laughs> Slow week the bazone is so good, dude. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. So, I, fun fact, I actually used to work at Pizza Hut, so I used to get to, like, make pizzones. No offense, but I just won't eat at Pizza Hut anymore. I think that kind of goes with anybody that's ever worked at a fast food restaurant. If you work there for, like, more than a month, no one ever wants to eat at those restaurants ever again. That is fair. That's totally fair. But the bazone, Chris, is so good. <laughs> It's just so good. It's been so long, so long since I've had one, and they are delicious. Oh. Really, really slow week for you this week, I see. On yeah, yeah. This was, the, uh, this was, this was, the, this was the, the pinnacle. This is the highest point of my – the apex of my week was eating a Pizone. You know what? To each – I'll his, take it. To each his or her own Pizone. So. <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right, well, uh, what made me... How to beat that, Chris? How to beat that, okay. Uh, I think if anybody out there has ever experienced the wonderful thing called moving, uh, they they know how terrible (laughs) it is to move. Uh, So this week, what made me happy is... It really just... Today is what made me happy. We're almost done packing everything up, so it's like a gigantic weight off my chest, and I don't want to have to deal with it. Until next week when we like actually begin to move, so it's gonna be it's gonna be quite an ordeal. But at least we're gonna be saving a bunch of money on rent, so I'm kind of excited about that. Nice, nice. Slow week, huh, Chris? Shoot, <laughs> hit you, hit you with that. Shut up, you win with the pizone, okay? You win. <laughs> I acknowledge my defeat. Uh, All right, well uh, here at uh, at Dial H, we like to bring you up to date information about the game of Hero Clicks and other. Related nerd content. Let's get into the news section. X-Men, the animated series, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Information came out this week. We got a lot a lot of solicits. Some of it's kind of, kind of interesting. You might care. Let's start off with the OP kit information. Here's what you need to know. Three copies of one limited edition Magneto hero click figure. Uh, five copies of a double sided map like normal, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the character you now know is uh, Magneto. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, do you care? Uh, I hope it's a really good Magneto uh, because right now the only current, there's a few current Magnetos to call in, and none of them are particularly great, especially since one takes up the title character slot. So I would like a really good Magneto call in. And it sounds like we're going to get a lot of Magnetos, so hopefully this guy is just cream of the crop Magnus. Do you think that WizKids on that slide that we got with Magneto without the helmet, it's oh, yeah. that one, but they, and they said it was about prizes or whatever? And it, oh, ma- yeah, that could be it. Can we I don't please... remember if that was the... The X-Men or Genesis or the whatever slide, but that could be it. Regardless, can we please refer to that Magneto as Magenta Ball's Magneto? It's done, dude. <laughs> it's, I, I'm going to go with it. From now on, solidified. Next part of this information, Dyson Token Pack. Uh, the Dyson Token Gee, Pack. Gee, 
<laughs> yeah, it's going to be super awesome. Uh, Dark Phoenix Icon is what is going to be. Oh, on, thank goodness. On I was about to say it's going to have an X on it or something, but that's cool. Dark Phoenix is cool. Yeah. Uh, and then six action tokens will Whatever. feature six beloved X-Men characters from the animated series and will have bystanders on the back to use with characters Ooh. that generate bystanders Ooh. in the booster set. So, hey, they're useful on two sides. <laughs> yep, I like I that, that seems to be what they've been doing with them now since the Wakanda one, uh, Earth-X had it, and now this, I don't remember if Rebirth even had a starter set ever, but either way, this is really cool. I like this. It, you know, people that make action tokens are kind of like, come on, we could step off, let us make some money here, but, uh, it makes it easier, more brand efficient for everybody involved just by these ones, so it's really cool. True. I appreciate it. All right. I appreciate it all. Fast Forces information. The Fast Forces will have you saying... To me, my X-Men, Wolverine. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know, right? Wolverine, Rogue, Beast, Storm, Gambit, and Jubilee come as a thematic team ready to play by themselves against your friends or perfect to mix with X-Men from your X-Men, the animated series, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Colossal boosters! Uh, once the player already has a starter set, of course, because it comes with, like, not everything you need. Uh, I mean, it seems like a pretty standard Fast Forces to me, as far as the characters yeah. chosen. There's really yes. nothing outside of the normal, other than, like, the fact that there's a cult following behind Jubilee, so if you don't want to have to worry oh, dude, about I love Jubilee so much. getting the Jubilee in the, from the regular set, at least you can guarantee and get it from the Fast Forces. It's kind of cool. And here... Sorry. And this is the creme de la creme of the information this week as far as what we care about. I'm going to read down through this. Uh, the animated set comes to the tabletop in a big way. Based on the success of Marvel Hero Clicks Avengers Infinity, Colossal Boosters are back. We kind of already knew that. But there's more information that we didn't know until this week that you'll find out in just a second. Uh, will contain four standard size figures and a two-by-two -two base figure in every booster discover new characters from both small and large in this can't be missed release the set will feature all of the fan favorites from the 1990s x-men animated series like wolverine rogue gambit jubilee and morph for the first time ever colossal characters will be prime figures all right yeah how do you feel about that yeah not crazy and here's <laughs> why i'm not crazy because the main set already has primes. There's 12 comms in a prime, right? So on top of the already four primes we get, we get three more colossal primes? Jeez! Oh my gosh, dude. So now, these are going to cost so much money, depending on what the ability is. Like, will I get a common, normal, single base figure prime with a super rare colossal prime? So, in Avengers Infinity, you got one super rare colossal per brick, Pretty easy, right? But now there's a Colossal Prime. Oh, my gosh, dude. This is going to be... I. It's cool, right? Like, the ability thing. You're like, oh, wow, Colossal is a Prime. That's kind of neat. And it is kind of neat. But from a collector's standpoint, I think they should have chose single base characters are Primes or Colossal characters are, are Primes. They should not have done both. I yeah. I just feel like it's too, it's too much. There's too much here. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It's dumb. It's really, it's I, really dumb. I want to like it, but it's so easy to hate there, it. There's so many things about this solicit I just want to just destroy. Like, I just want to uh -huh. pick apart, by the way. Uh, uh -huh. But well, I'll continue. We'll get to that in here in just a second. Uh, to continue, Colossal Figures in the set will feature some of the epic threats that the X-Men have faced, ranging from Nimrod to the Dark Phoenix or the Shadow King. By the way, I'm pretty sure the easiest way to reuse a sculpt and also make a prime is to make one of the two by twos Phoenix and make another one Dark Phoenix. Like, yeah. Like how how easy yeah. would that be? Uh, and Shadow King, not to fear, some of the X Men have found their way to be colossal, be a colossal answer to evil, like Iceman and Vange Whedon. If nobody knows who that is, it was a character uh, that was popular in X Men Extreme X Men. No, X Men Unlimited. I can't remember. Anyway, she turns I into a I dragon. Should, I don't know. Okay, she turns Sick. into a gigantic Sick. red dragon. That's all you need to know. I'm sure that's what the hero click is going to be. So, big red dragon. Um, 12 commons, one prime. 12 uncommons, one prime. 10 rares, one prime. 10 super rares, one prime. 6 chases. Here's one of the things I wanted to pick apart. Why does it start with uncommons? Because there's not rare or there's not a rarity level of every one of the colossals. It starts at 10 uncommon. Well, if they're already 
that's not the definition of uncommon if there's so one like, in the end. I feel like here's the reason is because you have to get one in each boost. It's easier to make common those common figures be your two filler commons and then your two uncommons or whatever and then your rare right so i feel like it was the same way with avengers infinity i just think it's i feel like it is easier to make them uncommon as opposed to because you have to make so many more colossals right you could theoretically say five commons five uncommons and just split them but um they just decided to go with uncommons for okay. whatever reason. I don't know. You well, get one in every booster anyways. There's ten of the uncommons, there's ten of the rares, and then there's five super rares. Yep. So there's that. Plus Another, one prime. Oh, plus Ugh. one prime. I'm sorry, I forgot. Another <laughs> thing I wanted to pick apart is the fact that uh, on this solicit, if you look to the right, right above the image, it says, click to download solicited image. And that is a solicited image of Avengers Infinity. <laughs> like, why would I want to download an image of it's Avengers scale, Infinity? Dude, like, it's for scale. You think we were going to get Miss, uh, whatever, Melody Harper, or whatever her name is, get her back in the studio to hold some more here? She's, she probably doesn't even know what these are. She's like, okay, I'm going to hold a box, take a picture. Awesome. Paycheck. Let's go. I don't think, like, because this picture is clearly just for, like, scale and size that they weren't going to, like, Photoshop or have someone else come in and hold a brick at X. For sure. It's weird. All it's right. weird. Yeah. I am looking forward to the set. I was a big fan of Avengers Infinity. I think it was really cool. So this doesn't come out until September, I believe, is the expected release date. I'm not even going to be here, so you're just going to have to let me know how that goes. <laughs> Uh, but I think it'll be pretty cool. I, I'm expecting people are going to be pulling these like colossal X-Men and be able to throw them on, you know, actual X-Men keyworded theme teams, and it it just work out really well. Uh, so well, I'm excited for a lot of reasons because now if that if that Ace Man is you know colossal or whatever, which he is. And if he has a retaliation, then I can use the Iceman ID card and call in a retaliator for a turn, which I think is really sick. Oh, that is pretty cool. I guess we'll so, see. Let's but hope, let's hope. remember, a lot of the the two by twos in Avengers Infinity did not have retaliation. That is true. That is true. Maybe he's just going to be a vehicle for all we know. I don't know. It's going to be a, let's be, see. a vehicle. Yeah, why not? Yep. Okay, well, that's about all the information we have right now. We did get two previews for Regenesis. This actually uh, was last week, but I did want to cover them very briefly. I don't want to delve too far into these, um, but they are two more of the figures that have the swappable cards, depending on what the type of theme team that you play them on are. Uh, the first one is Wolverine. Uh, he's 120 points or 70 points in his top dial. He, he has the Indom, which is good, and 12 attack with uh, Precision Strike, which is also good. He's traded Toughness, and then a power that says when Wolverine – or that part of the same trade, I'm sorry, is when Wolverine clears one or more action tokens, heal him in one click. If you play him on the Jean Grey school theme team, instead of when he clears action tokens, it just transitions to uh, free action. Heal Wolverine of one Which click. Which is awesome. Yeah, which is really, really good. He's got improved movement. For 120 points, he's actually really good. He's got two stop clicks. And if you really liked the Headmaster one, but could never get a hold of one, I think this is a good substitute. It's not as good, but it's pretty good. It's almost as good, but not quite. So if you just couldn't get your hands on it. Uh, the other one is Cyclops, like I said. And we did figure out what the other keyword was going to be so gene gray is on one side the gene gray school of higher learning or whatever the other one is utopia so all of the blue cards are going to have that yeah. uh, utopia keyword um he's 120 and 70 points as well he's got the trait that says uh leadership and then free if another friendly character hit uh hit an opposing character this turn heal cyclops of one click if you use him on that keyworded team it instead says free if another friendly character hit or an opposing character this turn heal Cyclops of two clicks. So that's pretty good, actually. Um, he's also not as good as the one from the Super Rare from the last X-Men set. Yeah. But once again, if you could not get your hands on that Cyclops, this is a pretty good replacement for that Cyclops. Um, he's got Running Shot, Pin Sai, and 
I cannot tell because it's a little bit bleached out. It is either 17 or 18 defense with energy shield deflection. Can you tell? I want to say that's an 18 because he has an 18 right after it, so I would assume his top dial is an 18. Okay. that I mean, that's good. I mean, 20 from defense, plus he's got uh, improved targeting. Uh, he can blast people right next to him, so that's pretty sweet. Unfortunately, he doesn't ignore hindering terrain. With with his uh, with his range combat attacks, but I mean that's still pretty good. He's not bad. Um, he does also have two stop clicks. But the no, stop, yeah. Uh, the stop clicks on both the Wolverine and the Cyclops are on click three and six of their I think they're nine click eight click long dials. Uh, th- their dials are kind of like complementary to each other. Uh, one is just the range based version, and then obviously Wolverine is the the close combat version. But they're they're pretty pretty close to being the same thing. One has like uh, exploit weakness, one has pin psi, one has uh, combat reflexes, one has energy shield deflection. So it's just opposite ends. It's like two sides of the same coin. Right. So um, I do like these dials a lot. So at their 120 points, this is just my little thing that I like is that they're probably better than the 150 point. Headmasters at that point value. Obviously, the free to make an attack is huge with the uh, with the headmasters. But honestly, for these guys traded toughness, this Wolverine's easy easier healing ability than having to use regeneration, especially on a Jean Grey theme team. I think is great. Like he's missing a few stop flicks, but this Cyclops just having stop flicks is great. I think he's almost a better interpretation of Cyclops because you know Cyclops of Mastermind feels so weird. So I do really like these guys, but sadly they are not replacements. You know. Not for using with them with the cards, but... Yeah, not with the IVs. Yeah. But I, if you just want to use them to use them and save 30 points, you know... Go nuts. Like, yeah, top dial, yeah. They're, like, really good replacements. So, all right, that's all I have to say about that. I know we got a bunch of previews. If you did not know, Scott Porter put out his uh, every set that comes out, the unboxing, if you didn't want to take three hours out of your life to watch every one of those unboxing videos... Uh, we could, we pretty much threw everything up onto Facebook and Twitter if you want to jump on there and look at those. But is there anything in particular in those that you wanted to talk about or just about the unboxing or anything like that? Called? You know, there are a few characters I want to talk about. I'm going to skip the Flash, the Speed Force Deathstroke, uh, just because it does not interest me at all. I'm sorry, guys. I know some people are like, oh, it's really great. But honestly, my reaction was kind of similar to Scott's in the video. It was just like kind of, you know, not enough for a 150 point speedster. By the way, Scott Porter deserves an Oscar for just the amazing acting job he had to do, especially for what if and then in this set with that Deathstroke flash. And like, oh, dude, it was so it was so bad. You could tell he wanted it to be a better figure than it was. And he was just like kind of bummed, but he had to keep the energy up for the video. Oh, man, I, I do not – and he, he might have the hardest job at WizKids, honestly, even if it's not really technically a job at WizKids because trying to make this sometimes terrible stuff, like when he did What If, garbage set, and he you know he kept the pace running really well through that video. And, you know, oh, dude, it was hit after hit of just terribleness, and he freaking – he this deserves is, an help. This is the Catch-22 if you are a huge comic book fan. Like, you read the source material, or you watch the, the movies, or whatever. If you love these characters, and then WizKid sends you a set, and you don't know what's in it, and they're like, unbox this. And you pull it out, and you're like so excited, man. He pulls out this sculpt for Deathstroke. He's like, oh, it looks so good. And it does. It looks really good. It does look good. And then he starts delving into the dial, and you can see the disappointment in his face. <laughs> As he's going through this, but then it's like he catches himself. He's a professional, so he catches himself, and he reverses. He's like, oh, but, I mean, this is really good. <laughs> so, so, I just I – feel, I feel really bad for him sometimes. We don't have to kiss Wiz Kid's butt, so we can say whatever we want to. They're not sending us free stuff all the time, and quite honestly – I wouldn't want them to because then we would have to basically it, – it, like it wouldn't feel natural anymore. Like I'd be bowing down to whiz kids or something. That That's the way I felt, feel. But if you really just want to be like lied to, you can go watch uh, the unboxings of videos of these people that get free stuff sent to them. So yeah, I, just, I thought it was really funny. But we did get some good uh, – actual good previews in the – even if you don't know who these characters are – some of the characters are actually pretty good. 
And speaking of which, I really like this common character, Prez Ricard. He, he's just really sweet. So I'm going to start going through his traits here. He is the teenage president of America who is apparently in this one-off issue called Prez, number one, from 1973. So he has a trait, everyone's favorite teenage president. Prez Ricard doesn't count for or against theme teams. So slap this little 30-point dude on whatever team you want, 35-point. His second trait is the golden age of America. He's leadership, and he succeeds on a four through six. When Prez Ricard uses it and succeeds, instead you may remove one action token from each from sorry from any number of opposing characters. For each one removed, remove an action token from a friendly character within six squares. So you can remove tokens from opposing characters all over the map to help clear up your guys on your team. Why is that good? Why is that anything but, like, super-duper dangerous? Because if all you need to do is free up two or three characters to kill people you're removing tokens off of on the opposing team, then do it. Like, that's the safest play. If not, you can, of course, gamble where you think, like, oh, I might be able to kill this guy. I really don't know his dial that well. Or whatever. Or, in a Battle Royale-type scenario... You can start clearing off some other dude's characters so that way those guys can just keep going ham at it and keep the guy that you're next to not, which can also lead to potential collusion, right? Someone can call you out on it. So maybe don't do that all the time. But like if it's random people where it's like a randomized battle royale, I would go nuts with it. I think this is a great thing. I would honestly, I'd hamper to put him on a lot of teams. He has really cool stats. So he has no special combat symbols, no range, seven movement, zero attack, zero damage value for his first two clicks. He has 18 defense on his top two clicks as well with 18 defend. Then he goes into sidestep, combat reflexes, close combat extra with one damage. So he can do like three damage with a 10 attack or, you know, a 10 two, whatever on these later clicks with sidestep. Great combos. Wish he had style. I'd set his entire dial, but that, you know, is sadly a no. He is a character selected for Hero Clicks by Jose Rodrigo Rosales Guerrero. I hope I did that right. But he's a 2016 Hero Clicks Mexican, Mexican national champion. And I want to thank that the Mexican national champion made a blonde United States president. I just really appreciate that, guys. You're killing it. Um, so this is, one of, this is really, this really is one of my favorite figures. I think he's awesome. Uh, I like him a lot. Another one is, believe it or not, Commander Steel, because we're getting like three of these in a set, which I think is awesome. Here's why this Commander Steel is cool. All right, he's 40 points. He's JSA. He's got Indom. He has Charge, uh, Super Strength, 17 Defense, Invulnerability, 3 Damage with Leadership. He also goes down to like a 4 Damage with Empower later in the dial, and his attack value goes down to a 9. But either way, it's not really his stats that I care about. It's kind of the traits. But he's a JSA Commander Steel, so he's All-Star Squadron, Justice Society, Past, and Soldier. Okay, uh, simpler time trait. Once per turn, for all characters of this trait, if character uses the JSA team ability to replace its defense value with Commander Steel, so when targeted with a close combat attack, after resolution, steal the attacker, 1 Penetrating Damage. This can also be a colossal uh, deterrent if you're playing a JSA theme team. It, it was way more popular when Jakeem was better, but sadly that's not the case. But that's still really cool, even in casual nights, which is awesome. So I really like this Commander Steel uh, as another one of these power commons. Um, a few characters of note to mention that were spoiled, what, that were cool, was Shade the Changing Girl. I'm not going to go much into her dial at all, but she was cool. We have the very first ever Clixed Jessica Cruz. I don't care for her that much as a character. I know a lot of people really, really like her, so hopefully, you know, it's a bummer she's a super rare, but I hope that people can get her hands on her and uh, check her out, because it is really cool that we have Jessica Cruz. Um, we, I'm going to talk about this Red Hood, and then I'm going to do Batman New Laps. Am I going to talk about this Red Hood? No, I'm not. Okay, cool. Just want to double-check that. Uh, he's pretty cool. He's got Outsiders, 75 points. I like it. But the Batman New Laps, Chris, did you want to talk about this guy? Yeah, I, he just does something that's okay. really, really interesting to me, and they made him so that he doesn't just generate a pog, so whatever. It actually has a detachable Robin, very similar to, like, Red Wolf or... Um, what was the guy from Kick Ass? I can't remember. He Colonel uh, Colonel Stars and Stripes. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Um. So he has the same trait, the same two traits, uh, as the other Batman, the Dark Knights, um, the reckless disregard for life, and then we will not hide in the shadows anymore. Those are the same. Uh, what he does that's different, and what what makes him worth, kind of worth, his one hundred and seventy five point line which is dumb because he doesn't do much damage, really does not do much damage. Uh, he has this trait called Crow, 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 Bar. 
And if, if you read the comic, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, it says, Hilarious. when the Batman who laughs starts the game, or the Batman who laughs starts the game with Robin attached. When Robin is attached and the Batman who laughs would take damage, instead, Robin becomes unattached and is placed adjacent. When that Robin would be KO'd by an opponent's attack, instead, attach him to the Batman who laughs. Free, place that Robin adjacent. So, it's kind of cool, because, I mean, you can avoid one massive, like, alpha strike is just not going to do anything. You, and it doesn't say do the damage to the Robin or anything like that. You can just avoid entirely an attack as long as it's not a pulse wave. So, I mean, come, someone comes in with a charge for five damage, and they forget that this trait exists. He's just absorbing all the damage, goes nowhere, pops off this Robin, and the Robin can do something a little bit dumb as well. Uh, he has uh, this trait. It says, Crow, Robin takes no damage from traits named Reckless Disregard for Life and can't be the target for Mastermind. Um, that's interesting, but he has 10 speed charge, 11 attack with blades, 15 defense with combat reflexes, and Indom. And that's just the character that pops off. So you're talking about, like, the, I mean, he's not autonomous, which is kind of crappy, but, I mean, he just pops off, and you have the ability to blades for six off this, like, little stupid thing that pops off. Uh, the Batman Who Laughs has, like, nine speed with running shot, but he only has five speed, which sucks. He does have 12 attack with end cap and three lightning bolts, which is good, but it's really hurt by the fact that he only has five range. He has end on. It's just the fact that, I mean, he can absorb one major attack or something like that. Is he worth 175 points? No, I don't think that he no. is. But no. he has a 100-point line, and you're still going to get your Robin there. Uh, loses running shot, turns into a close combat attacker, which was actually going to work with his reckless disregard for life trait better because it's about close combat attacks, not about range combat attacks. So, I don't know, very oddly designed character, but I just really like the fact that they made him so you can detach the Robin. I think that's really cool. So here's the part I love. He has <laughs> incapacity. His whole thing makes a lot of sense because the incapacity is called the gun that killed the Waynes. I think if all we did was put an action token on the Waynes, they'd be feeling a lot better than being gunned down in a random back alley. Like, that should so be penetrating psychic blast or just something, you know, or precision strike. If he had... Almost any other attack power, his whole dial, besides incapacitate, he'd be a lot better for 175 points. Um, I feel like they just wanted to make a big, they wanted to make him a high point value character who is kind of high risk, high reward, right? He can block a few attacks with Robin. He can, whenever Robin would die, he can go ahead and throw him back on the dial, block another attack. So it's cool that it punishes you for getting rid of or dealing with Robin because Robin's terrifying, right? He's got... 10 speed, 11 attack, you know, charging blades. Like, that is that is a terrifying thing to have that little dude running around the board. But also, you don't want the Batman who laughs to just be taking shots, like, no problem. So, he's designed weird. He feels like that, like, 200-point Joker from The Dark Knight Rises, who I, like, two damage his entire about, like, dial. Like, he's a big boss kind of character, and he's supposed to be cool, and his sculpt looks great, but he's just not a viable one-man army-style person. These have got to be the le the most underpowered chases I have maybe ever seen. Yeah. They they just don't do much. They're cool, and their sculpts are pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie, but that's about as far as it goes. So I don't expect these to go for very much on the secondary market post-month one, maybe month two. Dude, and the pre-release is different this time around, too. It's only a week per pre-release as opposed to the normal two weeks. And the prices are, of course, going to skyrocket like they always do with pre-release. But I think they are really going to tank as soon as everyone gets a hold of this set. You know, I'm going back and forth whether or not I need to get this set because so far I still only need one figure, and that's Lex Luthor. You know, like, that's <laughs> it. You know, I, you know, I've got to pick up the Haywoods because they're all commons and uncommons, so that's no big deal. Hey, so, the Teen Titans are pretty legit, though. Yeah, but they're like Teen Titans. I don't but they're like Teen Titans. Yeah, you I don't need the Teen Titans. <laughs> you know, now, if they were Teen Titans, go, I'd be, well, I'd be all over it, but no. 
Hey, they made that cyborg a Teen Titan instead of just making him a Justice League member. But he's still just like a generic cyborg with like, I shoot things like, okay, cool. I don't know. That sculpt is pretty sweet, though, because it actually looks like he's shooting a laser beam out of his out of his arm. That is cool. I will agree with you there. But yeah, so far this set, you know, and I'm also not a DC guy. I don't know who half these people are at all. And the ones I do know, I'm like, I don't care about. So bummer, I know. But this is going to be a pickup randomly random figures for me i'll totally go to all the seals and stuff like that for sure but man nah. this is gonna <laughs> be a really really bad set to sit down and do uh battle royales at like, oh, a future origins or maybe a gamma or something like that this just seems like you're gonna sit down and they're gonna be like do you want to do marvel or dc and you choose dc and now you have to play this set you know it's, it's a huge bummer because there are some really good power commons and uncommons and stuff but even if you pull a chase, you're probably not going to keep them. You know, like most of these chases will probably die. I mean, Murder Machine can be insane in Battle Royales and stuff like that. But still, I'm just, I'm not super really loving this set. And it, it feels bad because they could have made so many figures better. They pulled a lot of punches for this DC set. They should have been going all out. Because if we only get one DC set a year, it should be awesome. Batman the Animated Series, so many people voted for it to be their favorite set of the year. Why? Because it was an awesome set. <laughs> also, it was, it was a great that is a set I bought a brick of. I'm not getting a brick of this one. To me, it kind of feels like, you know how you watch a trailer for an upcoming movie and they show you all of the great stuff in the trailer and then you go to see the movie and then you're like, well, yep, I fell for another one of those. Everything yeah. that was happening was in the trailer. That's what this set did. When it first came out, like when they're first showing information about it and everybody's getting super excited and it was like, Rebirth, oh my god, this is awesome. And even then I was like, man, this might turn out to be a really good set. That's what it turned out for me to be. Like, uh, I mean, I don't know who Defiance is. If you're a big fan of the Defiance team, good. I mean, that's awesome. I'm glad you got what you wanted. If you're a huge Teen Titans fan, that's like the coolest thing about this set, honestly, to me, is the Teen Titans. Because... The other, like, sub-theme is the Justice League, and while it is cool that they've got that trait, like, every one of them has a trait where if they're leading the charge, then something happens, but that trait, it's not that good, and then if you look at the dials, it doesn't really look like the rebirth of DC. Like, it was, this was supposed to be something great, and it's kind of a letdown to me. I agree, man. I agree. All right. If you disagree, make sure you jump on Twitter, Facebook, and rip our faces out. Tell yeah, us tell us how wrong we are. Yeah, but until then, why don't we go look for a hidden gem? But wait, wow, that looks like a diamond. That's a segment we haven't done in a minute, so I figured we could probably do this. Hidden gem is we go back, we look at a figure that didn't get a lot of love back in the day, or... It got a resurgence of love because of some stuff that uh, came out and made it a little bit more viable. Let's start with, and we have affectionately named this a fool's gold little combo. I found this uh, yesterday, actually, and I thought it was it was cool enough to talk about. You, Calder, remember the Uncanny X-Men set, the chases were the Age of Apocalypse chases, and you had the Magneto that did the really cool thing called Creator of the X-Men in this reality. When building your force, you may choose a character of 150 points or less. That character has the X-Men keyword this game, right? Pretty good trait by itself. Yeah, so, for sure. I was looking at it. I was like, well, what would you want to make into an X-Men? Well, you don't want to – say you're one of those people that you're like, I don't want to break theme by making a Joker into an X-Men character or something like that. Like, that's dumb. So I was like, what could you make into an X-Men character that totally makes sense, but you would not be able to play on a regular X-Men keyworded theme team? Now, unfortunately, I don't know many people are going to be able to get their hands on this because it's a very old figure. But what it does, if you can get your hands on it, is really, really stupid. We're going to go back all the way to the set Fantastic Forces, number 94. It is the Unique from the set. Uh, if you don't know, Uniques are what now they call chases. Uh, Professor Xavier, 99 points. He has a celebrity psychic. Celebrity psychic was a keyword back in the day, if you didn't know that. And Ultimate X-Men as a keyword. So you couldn't even put him on a regular X-Men uh, theme team. 
so now you can with this. Why would you want to do that? Because he has 11 attack with incapacitate, mind control, with 12 range and 3 bolts. All right? 12 range and 3 bolts. In addition to that, he has 13 defense, which is crap, but he has mastermind, That's which is defense, awesome. defense, though. Which is awesome. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter that he has 13 defense. Who cares? What? I mean, it makes sense. if you're. I mean, he's a dude in a wheelchair. <laughs> like, why would his defense be that right. high? Right. Oh, jeez. Um, no offense to anybody. I, like, what, what are you going to jump out of the way of a, an attack? It doesn't seem very likely. Okay, I better stop right here. Let's just uh, keep going. Leadership <laughs> is also on this dial. He has zero damage. But who cares? You've got leadership. So even if you want to put him on the same team as that Magneto, you can take the action tokens off of the Magneto that he's on the team with. Um, he he has the ultimate X-Men team ability. Yeah, that's actually a thing, believe it or not. What's it do? At the beginning – or actually, it's not even at the beginning of the game um, – let me see if I can get it to... It's any time yeah. you want it to be, man. Once per... Be game, I'll, I'll just read it. I'll just read it. Uh, once per ca- game, per character, a character using the X-Men team ability, uh, the ultimate X-Men team ability, may choose one opposing character or all characters possessing a single chosen team ability. This choice can be made only once per game, even if the character has used another team ability. When this character attacks a chosen character, modify the chosen character's defense value by negative one. So there's a lot of a lot of use for this. I mean, if everybody has the same team ability, man, you just basically got a plus one attack when you're attacking all those characters effectively. I mean, it's minus one defense, but you're talking like basically a 12 attack on this character from 12 range with incapacitate, which is dumb. You're not going to be doing damage. It's not a damage doing dealing character, but Seriously, because of the way that they changed mind control, this guy doesn't take reverb damage anymore. So you can mind control three characters at the same time from 12 range away. Man, that's dumb. That is super dumb. So if you can get your hands on this, awesome. Uh, on click number two, he, he switches from mastermind to willpower. So you can like switch him over, and then from leadership, he goes into perplex. He loses one attack, but you got perplex now. So... It's really, really useful character and something that you could do all kinds of dumb stuff with in the future. So I don't know. What do you think? Dude, I love figures like this. You're just like, huh, they exist. Didn't know that. And then it's like, huh, they're really pretty good. I um, I think this would be a really fun uh, Professor Xavier just to pull out on a random Golden Age game just because it'll it'll like set people back. They're like, oh, what, dude, 12-range mind control, triple bolt? Are you serious? Or 12-range incapacitate? And also you have negative one defense if you have an opposing team ability that he chooses. Like imagine going against a shield team and mind controlling three people. You have an 11 attack. Then we got like a 16 or 17 defense. It's pretty awesome. Uh, leadership. I'm so happy he has Mastermind. If he had any other defense power, he would be garbage. Like, just, like, as a fact, Todd Isle, because if he couldn't Mastermind, he would be one shot so bad. But um, that thank goodness he's got Mastermind, because it makes him really cool. Honestly, I'm really glad you talked about this piece, because he's really cool. Like, I kind of want to get one and play well, him now, because that's just a really fun little piece. In addition to that, now, now, by himself, he's a great character, but you couldn't use him until this Magneto. With this Magneto, it makes it even better because the Magneto also has leadership, so they can take action tokens off of each other. And then Magneto has flight, so he can carry him if he needs to. And he also has TK top dial, so you got some positioning with the – because of that Magneto – he doesn't do much damage top dial. No. He doesn't have penetrating. He only has three printed damage. So, like, like, what are you trying to do with this Magneto? You might just be able to use – this might be one of the best mind control characters in the history of the game for being able to mess up an entire team in one turn because you can hit three characters in one turn and no reverb damage. Yeah. It's insane, this, this little awesome. combo. So hopefully with this X-Men stuff that's coming out, people will see a resurgence of the X-Men keyword getting used a lot in your local venues. Let them know about this. This might be dumb. They might be sitting on this figure and they had no idea that it even existed uh, or didn't exist anymore. Because, like, I'm not going to lie. I have a lot of stuff from stuff like but back in Explosion, all the way back to Explosion. I don't remember any of that stuff. 
<laughs> like, uh. I might, I honestly might have this Magneto. I'm not sure, or this Professor Xavier. I don't know, but if I do, I mean, it's a good character again. So there you go. That, that that's my uh, little fool's gold for this week. So sweet. You would would you like to would you like to take a trip? We're taking a trip, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Silver Age Value Corner of Value. Uh, here we like to give you a value for your value. So without any saying ado or whatever it's called, without further ado, let's get to the value, shall we? So for 40 points, no range, just special combat symbols. Guess what? Doesn't need them. This character has a really sweet keyword. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And I'm not going to tell you what any of the uh, special powers are because they'll also give it away. But for 40 points, we have special speed power. And it is blank can use sidestep. When he has one action token, he may use sidestep twice this turn and may be given a free action to make a close attack. Which means you can move up 10 squares, right, with the first sidestep. Make a close attack for free, and then sidestep back two squares. Did I tell you this character has improved movement, ignores hindering terrain, ignores elevated terrain, and ignores characters, so he just automatically breaks the lay? Like a bouse, all right? This is, like, one of the best flash dials that is not a flash dial. Okay, guys? And I stole that from the comments, but that's fine. And then, after you do that, you can still make another close attack and bounce back four squares if you want to stay adjacent. He also has precision strike for his top three clicks. He only does two damage on his top three. One damage on his last two, but he has exploit. He has combat reflexes the entire dial. Sidestep on the last two clicks and uh, nine attack, one damage. So, you want to keep this guy top dial as much as you can because he's a 10-2 for first three clicks, which is really, you know, solid stats. With precision strike anyways, always being able to get that one damage too. But for 40 points... All right, and, and that is pretty much the gist of this character style. Like I said, that martial arts keyword is going to really help put him on a lot of teams. So there is a rare. This character, uh, I'm not going to tell you from the set is, but guess how much this character is. He's, he's on the pricier side of the corner, but he's still under that great $3 mark that I, I don't like to go over. So is there any, any guesses about this character is worth, Chris? After I told you, he can be carried all the way across the map, and he can go ahead and make a free close attack. He can move up, sidestep back to bring a light object to equip to other people, and then also go across the map. He has a token. Pow. Hit someone for two damage, maybe just one damage, but going through reducers anyways. You know, he, I think he's a great, really versatile figure that might, that should, I believe. He's seen a little bit of meta play, but not nearly enough for how amazing he is. Any, okay, uh, so we're talking about actually a little bit of meta play. All right, and I would say so, for sure. That brings up the value, but does it also bring up the price? Can you tell me, is it, uh, is it rotated out now? It is not rotated out. It will be very soon rotated out. Oh. Ooh, ah. Is, is it DC? It is not DC. It is Marvel. Mm, I don't character. know, man. I don't have a guess. I, I can guess on a price, okay. though, because you're trying to sell me a value. Okay. We're, we're at the value. Trying course. to sell you value. I'm going to say, if it's seen any meta play, uh, let's go with 299 299 Oh, he's, he's trying to put me at my highest cap here. Let's, because we're going crazy here. This is smart, and we are slashing prices in half. <laughs> it is $1.49. This is none other than the George's Bedrock Zilper 050 from the, um, the Marvel Hero Crix Avengers <laughs> Defenders War. Rare set. Your, I have fed it. Is that your French accent? That is my French, because his speed power is called Ze Comme Ze Le Pain, and it's spelled <laughs> like that. Spelled like that. So, oh, man. I, uh, this last Friday, I, I put him on a team with the Captain America Resilient, Resilient Fudge, the Sam Cap, and then this Batch Rock, so I can make like four attacks after being carried in one turn. I think this Batch Rock is awesome. I think he should be on more Alpha Strike teams. I think he is sick. I mean... If you're carrying with overdrive, you got a power for three damage, dude. I really like this batch rock. I think you should see more play. It's probably going to be on my state's team. We'll have to see what it is. But I think he is just so crazy unique. He's so crazy cool. You know, you're not going to put him on a batch rock great theme team. You might not even put him on a martial artist theme team. But I think he is just so awesome. He should be played more. And this is kind of a callback. I know I'm talking a lot, folks. But this is a callback from the Captain America set. And this is the only other comic batch rock they've made since then. And it is just as good, if not better. Because that batch rock could move up all the way with his leap climb for nine squares and make a free attack. But now this patch rock, whenever he has an action token, he can make a free attack. So he can move up, you know, 12 squares and make a free attack. I feel like this is, and he's 12 points less. So I feel like this is the new value corner batch rock. Cause as soon as Drew said that Captain America batch rock was great, I bought instantly like 12 of them. I'm like, oh, I need <laughs> these guys, you know, which is terrible in a 600 something point game because they only do two damage and they don't have resistance strike. 
But either way, I really like this batch rock. I think you should see more play. And besides that, the entire time, you can be like, and here's a close attack from Zilli Bear. I mean, it's so much fun. <laughs> this is how you make friends in your local venue, by the way. Zilli yeah. Bear. Just yell it at him as you're or, running or your Or mortal enemies for like, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> mortal enemies. So <sighs> I love him. I want to be Love him. He's a buck fifty. Come on, he's a buck forty nine, guys. Pick him up. Pick up all of them. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> We're gonna buy them all. Okay, I mean, you can buy them all. This is capitalism. Who cares? Hey, you can buy them all if you want. Do it. Go for if, it. If you want to buy them all just so everybody else can't have them because you don't want to be attacked by Zelipel, <laughs> then you can do you can do that if you want to. Who cares? Oh uh, heck yeah! So that is this week's value corner figure of value, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's uh, let, uh, let you, did you did you enjoy yourself there? Did I you enjoyed least, myself so much. Did, did listener, did you at least get a laugh out of I hope. horrible French accents? Horrible, I'd say that's pretty accurate if you ask me. All right, Are you well, to a Frenchman, they totally sound like that. Then now is the time to let you know that Dial H works off the value for value model. Our goal is to entertain you guys and gals, so if you feel like we give you value in your life, consider showing us your love and leveling up your heroic rank so you can earn your heroic titles like citizen, vigilante, protagonist, super fan. It's a thing. You can get to super fan. You can be a super fan if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. And if your friends <laughs> don't want to be super fans, screw them. You can be a super fan. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, but seriously, you're about to go to a Rebirth release and spend like $24. You could probably you could jump on Patreon, do one dollar a month, and get your get your own heroic title. So maybe do that. We are going to start doing the heroic rank level ups the second episode or of every month. If you listen to previous episodes, you know why. We already explained this. So there you go. We'll do that uh, second week of the next month, which I believe is April. And uh, yeah, there you go. Let's move on to community. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Every week. On Facebook and on Twitter, we put a Community Tuesdays question. This one we said, there have been countless sets over the years, but not all of them are winners. Which Heroclix sets have you skipped? I'm just going to let you know, I received like at least 17 answers on Twitter. No, 20-something answers on Twitter. And Calder got like 20-something answers on Facebook. So because we received so much wonderful support from you guys by jumping on these, we're, we're we got to cut it down. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. But let's start with ourselves. Calder, which set you're like, this is garbage. I don't want anything to do with it. So I I was kind of off and on buying sets because I didn't have a regular venue for like a really long time. Um, but now when I started going to more and trying to buy a brick of each set is when I really started was that was around the first Deadpool set. And I skipped pretty much every DC set. The first time I ever bought a brick of a DC set was this Batman the Animated Series set. But this, the set I remember skipping the most and it's because it was a Marvel set, but it was it was already all spoiled. And I skipped Avengers Defenders War because I didn't want any of the uncommons and commons rares. I'm like, I want Batroc because he's amazing. He's in it. Yeah, I need the Captain America. Sure. But I was just not interested in a lot of the, the other you know, parts of the set. I skipped that set. I skipped uh, all of the X-Men sets. Um, sorry. But like once again, it's like I need to buy my Warpath. My, I'm a Wolverine. And that's kind of like it, you know. Um, the only reason I even bought a brick of this last Xavier School X-Men set is because I was trying to get a super rare or a chase, whatever, for Collins and stuff, which I didn't get. didn't even get the ID card either, so that kind of sucked. So those are sets that I've skipped, you know, most notably, though, being a few Marvel sets like Avengers Defender War and stuff like that. So, yeah, they're not all winners. Uh, mine is going to be a really short answer. TMNT Unplugged was garbage, and I would never give them money for that. <laughs> And they should feel bad about that at the end of the day. They should. It was such a terrible, terrible set. I am sorry anyone out there that was so excited for that set, and then they got it all got spoiled, and then they're like, man, this was like DC Rebirth for me, but in the past. Like you knew DC Rebirth in the future, which hadn't even been announced yet, was going to be garbage, but you were just like hoping the same thing <laughs> for Team and Team Unplugged. <laughs> And you're like, ah, uh, this is garbage. I don't want to spend any money. That was that for me. So moving on to Twitter, uh, because, like I said, we got so many answers, I am going to only read people that have heroic ranks. So if in the future you want to make sure that you get your answer read when we get situations like this where we have so many answers, 
Make sure you get your heroic rank on Patreon. Our first answer on Twitter is going to come from Vigilante Collectible, who said, for me, Yu-Gi-Oh! was a big pass. I just didn't know what any of it was supposed to be. I still avoid playing on the maps like the plague. DC Rebirth, for me, looks to be a pass as well. Most of the preview reveals got a who? <laughs> All right. Nice. So I, I'm doing like half and half here because I did not nearly have enough uh, people also comment. So first up, starting us off, is Chance McCall. 90% of DC sets are passes for me, especially Batman-themed sets, which is like the last eight DC sets. They're all hat and no cattle. <laughs> I love how he's slowly trying to take over for you. He's trying. <laughs> Push him out. Push him out. Okay. Start, a, start a chant in your car. Oh, no. uh, citizen, <laughs> citizen Tiamu. Uh, our man in Finland said, basically skipped TMNT 4, Wonder Woman, and Undead, aside from ex some exceptions. Captain Marvel never arrived on the shelves here in Finland. And as much as I loved the movie and was looking forward to the set, I couldn't justify the prices at the few sites I could find them. All right. Uh, Lance Miller said, just for you, Calder, uh, EarthX, trash, miss it, and was happy to do so. Star Trek, Avengers, and WWE uh, cannot wait to skip that one. So, by the way, it seems that I always get personally attacked for some reason in these questions. No one attacks Chris. Like, what's with that? <laughs> Chris saying, just a little side note, all I'm saying, EarthX was a great set, Lance Miller. So, miss me with that. Um, I can't wait to miss WWE. I, I, some of these people that listen, I'm like, D <laughs> why? Why do you do this to me? Just saying, let's attack Chris. Let's keep it fair. Because it's been like let's three times that I've been attacked personally. Like, I don't really care. But like, come on, let's at least, let's, let's hit Chris up a little bit of insults. Well, to me. I think what it comes down to is hashtag Twitter army. Oh, We're geez. all cool. And this guy. the Facebook group, this does it, they don't even like you. <laughs> I'll explain why we're all cool on face or on Twitter here in a minute once we get through the Community Tuesdays, uh, because I try to help people out. We'll get to that. Uh, the next answer I have is from Vigilante Ben Jones. He said, "That's our man in Australia." He said, "Usually the CTD sets. Looking at Captain Marvel, but have skipped the others. Main sets I have skipped are What If, Agree 100% BT Dubs, and back in the day Brave and the Bold. Just didn't interest me. Fair enough." Uh, next up is from David Herberger. He always uh, he always gets DC and Turtle sets, and he pretty much plans to pass on many Marvel sets, but usually buys singles of what he likes. He is swapped opposite of like so many people because normally it's like past DC, past Turtles, and he's like, I'm gonna get all the DC, gonna get all the Turtles. His his profile picture is actually a turtle or a tortoise, whatever it is. So I think that's awesome, and he just passes on the Marvel sets, and I can really respect that. Okay, fair fair enough. Uh, we have, let's see, Vigilante's Porcupine Spaceship Grenade said, simply, Rebirth. Nice. Uh, that's a good pass. <laughs> it's looking to be that way. Van Eric Cave said he skips lots of Marvel. He skipped Mighty Thor, Avengers Defenders War, Xavier School. Uh, these are filled with characters that just don't interest him. Xavier School had some nice bits. He loves the X-Men, but it featured a lot of side mutant groups that he didn't know. And he said, yeah, it means I miss out on equipment, ID cars, etc., but they're not characters. Also skipped Star Trek. But I'm seriously interested in the follow-up Star Trek sets. That escalated price point might turn me away, though. I kind of agree. I think it's dumb they split it. I feel like it's going to turn a lot of people away. All right, super fan Eric Caves, I at least hope that you did not skip getting gold balls because he's awesome. He's like, he's like to me, what Kite Man, hell yeah, is, hell yeah. is to Calder. <laughs> Love gold balls. All right. The last answer I want to read from Twitter is going to be from superhero and super fan, the ruffian, little plastic superheroes. He said, I don't understand how people are answering rebirth. I tend to skip most gravity feed sets, but really felt underwhelmed with the Civil War summer OP. I okay. I can say I well, okay, yeah. It it was not the greatest. It was really underpowered and the set overall was pretty boring there wasn't a bunch of like crazy stuff that was going on inside of it there were some cool things like let's uh, taskmaster was pretty interesting he did some cool stuff but the rest of the stuff you got like jack-o-lantern no special powers no special trait nothing it was just boring it did nothing so i can see that all right so i got two more here uh citizen james peters says all star trek 
Um, which I assume that means he bought every other set ever existing because there's only one Star Trek set. I love you, Jamie. Don't worry about it. Um, and then superfan Lucas Van Holland said he skipped Superman and Wonder Woman. Uh, not a bad set to skip. Technically a set I skipped as well, so I agree with you there. Okay. And by the way, guys, if you want to see more crazy diverse answers to figure this out, you should go to Twitter and Facebook and read all these answers. I honestly want to because you figure out so many cool diverse opinions. And you're like, what? This X person skipped X set. I'm like, that was my favorite set. You know, it's really cool to see everybody else's opinion on this. Uh, I actually really liked the topic for discussion we had this week. I thought it was great. Not just because I came up with it, but because it actually came up. <laughs> no, not just because it was my thought process. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm not saying it's me, but it's me. But I'm not saying hey. it out loud. Okay, so the reason why Twitter likes me and Facebook does not like Calder is because when, <laughs> when people message us things on Twitter, I try to actually do my due diligence and answer them. One of the questions that we got uh, is actually from Jedi Legend, who gives us our wonderful Heroclix tips of the week. Um, it has to do with the new Batman that is coming out in the Rebirth set. I'm not going to go into the dial or anything like that. He just has a trait, and the trait uh, is called, yeah, he does that. And it says, lines of fire drawn to Batman are blocked unless the line of fire uh, crosses only un occupied clear squares he wanted to know how this worked um i i looked into the rule book just to make sure i'm not like talking out of my butt real quick but on page 19 of the the comprehensive rule book under clear squares which it specifically says in there uh, in that trait it says a square that isn't hindered or blocking for either movement or line of fire is called clear a clear square clear isn't a type of terrain but rather an absence of terrain because I didn't want anybody out there to be confused with blocking or I'm sorry, elevated terrain, not being considered clear squares. So this does not block line of fire to Batman. If he's standing on the edge of like a building and your line of fire does not cross anything that's not hindered or occupied by um, a character. Specifically because even if your character has like ignores characters for targeting purposes and stuff like that, if it passes like hindering terrain and they don't have ignores hindering terrain, the trait is going to just prevent it from being an option. Is that, you got that? You, anything else that you want to say, Calder? Yeah, I like sort of understand, I think. I think I like half understand. Okay. So <laughs> I, just, I, I just think I just will not play against or play this Batman ever just to help me out. It, That's it not will... the way to do it. <laughs> It looks it looks more confusing than what it actually is. Yeah, it does. Just, just think of it as like kind of like super stealth. Um, if it crosses anything hindering or pretty much anything in just blatant square whatever, it's going to be blocked uh, or clear stuff. It, it's going to be blocked. Uh, as in, he's not even an option. So there you go. Hopefully that answers your question out there. And if anybody is getting ready to uh, play in a uh, a release and somebody pulls the Batman and they're trying to tell you that it works this way, that's different than what I just said. That's that's not true. Don't let them. And also don't don't forget, you know, and be like, oh, I can target this Batman because he's on elevated terrain or whatever. So there you go. All right, speaking of Jedi Legend, let's go ahead and do his Heroclix tip of the week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. He says, when you see the text at the beginning of your turn, and it's underlined, this must be spoken or done during the beginning of the turn phase, right before the action phase. Sounds obvious, but any later, and that ship has sailed. That is correct. Don't. Forget to do things if it specifically says to do it at the beginning of your turn. Cool opponents out there will be like, yeah, man, I don't I don't really care if you forget. Like, but, you do, like, a free action, which is like, oh, I'm going to sidestep two. Oh, no, wait, I roll for leadership. It's like, yeah, sure, you go for it. Uh, he, he did he did link uh, a one picture from a recently made character, just as an example, the Archon. And he said, at the beginning of your turn, an opponent places Archon into an adjacent square. So it's, it's, you have to do it at the beginning of the turn. So just don't forget uh, you won't be able to do it any time past that. Although in this particular thing, at the beginning of your turn, an opponent places Archon into an adjacent square. It does not appear that that would be an optional thing. It does not contain the word may. So I think you just you have to. 
Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. I can dig it. I can dig it. All right, that's a Heroclix tip of the week. We don't have any birthdays this week, so if you or somebody that plays at your local venue has an upcoming birthday, you want to give them a shout-out on the podcast, make sure you let us know who it is and when their birthday is. We can give them that sexy, happy Arabian birthday. We can get that in there. The Dial H Initiative, uh, home base initiative, make sure you, if you are playing at a venue that has not been claimed in a state or a country, uh, you can let us know where you play, and you can claim that state or that country as a flagship store for the Dial H community, the podcast, but the community as a whole. That way we can uh, visit you, maybe, possibly, in the future. Might be a cool way to get your local venue. I just uh, want these people from podcast. Wyoming to claim it, like, so bad, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> What if, what if they don't know that we exist in Wyoming because it's, it's so isolated? Because it's Wyoming? Wyoming? Dude, maybe. I, I, I want to drive the however many hours it would be to Wyoming. It'd be obviously really close for me, but still, uh, so bad, dude. It's so bad. Uh, you, you won't. I, <laughs> you won't. No balls, no balls. Um, <laughs> one last thing in community. I kept this a secret from Chris because that's kind of how it was supposed to be. So Malcolm Rush sent us questions. It's supposed to be really fast because it's the top three challenge answers quickly without thinking the answers. And he said, also wait till you start taping your episode so you don't know what the questions are. I have not seen the questions. <laughs> so okay. if we want to go into this, we can do it. Yeah, hold on. I, okay. I didn't know we have questions, but here we go. Oh, yep. So, top three questions. Sorry about springing that on you, but I, I also just remembered it. And sorry, I was screwing around, like, playing with a, a pen. So if anybody heard tapping, that's also my bad. So, number one, top three hero clicks that reshape the game. Chris, go. That reshape the game? Reshape. Uh, okay. Is it, like, mechanics, too, or just it's hero not, clicks? It's just hero clicks. Just figures. Do it. Uh, right now, uh, any colossal with retaliation, re -change, or change the game, shape the game. Uh, green Arrow. The Dark Knights one, and I want to say Hawkeye. Okay. Uh, Weapon of Quard, Fire Lord, uh, Unimine. Okay. Uh, top three resources of all time. Uh, definitely the book is in there. I love the book. Um, I really also love the Phoenix Force because it was OP, and then I'm going to go with the Utility Belt because until they nerfed it, that thing was crazy. <laughs> I'm going to go Infinity Gauntlet, Power Batteries, and then Phoenix Force. Uh, top three sets of all time. Ultimates, uh, the Mighty Thor, and Batman Animated Series. Nice. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Deadpool, the 2014 one, and then uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. No, Earth X. Earth X. <laughs> uh, top three maps of all time. Uh, let's see. Pacific Ocean... Uh, the AD, no, not the ADW, the, um, Avengers versus X-Men Utopia maps that you put together. It makes a super, super cool, uh, dual map. And then my favorite, maybe one of my favorite maps of all time from the original Infinity Challenge starter set, the one that is, uh, it's like a mall. It doesn't make any sense, but nice. you go in through the front door and then there's just like, 27 rooms that you can walk into. It made for a really weird game every time I played on it. Love it. Uh, I'm going to go also kind of with Chris, uh, Avengers Utopia West, uh, King Arthur's Castle, and the Let Them In Wakanda map from the ROC states. Next up, top three people that you enjoy playing the game with can be friendly or competitive. Uh, so my brother, I love playing with my brother. Um, I like playing with you when we've actually done it. That's always been fun, like when we sit down to do battle royales because – we don't really take it that seriously. It's always super fun. It's awesome. And um, uh, pass. I'll think of someone as you do. Okay, this is gonna be tough. I'm gonna say Chris because I freaking enjoyed the whoop whoop the, the police game. That was so awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say Kevin because we don't take our game seriously at all. That one's great. I have a really hard time with this. I played so many people in battle royales. Um, I want to give it to like uh, Tommy Lytle or there's another really really freaking funny guy in battle royales. Can't remember his name. I just want to shout out to like pr pretty much every person I played a battle royale with in Rocktober. They all deserve. They all deserve it. Yeah, sure, those guys. Chris, did you think of another person? No, I suck. I'm horrible at this. Okay, nice. Uh, number seven, top three podcast episode from either yours or another podcast. Oh lord. <laughs> I know. I, I'm gonna uh, keep the serial clicks related though, not like 
Well, yeah, I, I kind of... Joe Rogan show that. this episode. Okay, so yeah. in, in full disclosure, I don't listen to any other Heroclix podcast, and the only reason I listen to mine is so, or the ours, is so that I can hear my screw-ups to try to make myself better for the future. Like, if you go back in time and listen to my old stuff compared to now, I hope, I hope people agree that I've gotten a little bit better with my likes and my ums and my, those things, but I still do it, unfortunately, so that's the only reason I even listen to mine. I don't even like my own episode. (laughs) (laughs) You go. I'll see if I can remember some episode that I really okay. enjoyed. Um, this is Dallas for Hero Clicks, but it's not us. It is the episode where they first talked about Rocket Racer, and they like went into his Wikipedia page. I laughed so hard out loud. Like that was one of the the first times where I was listening to a podcast, and I was so glad I was by myself in the middle of a cow pasture fixing fence because I was I was losing it. Oh my gosh, it was hilarious. Um, another side note to that. So I gotta take up another one, but the twenty fifth episode the one where it's all the funny little bits that hunter edited together that one's hilarious that's a great dial h episode definitely go listen to that if you can um another podcast was i used to listen to this more when brandon begaff was on it was two clicks from ko i don't know i like brandon a lot i, I like i like aaron too hey aries edge no he's fine he's fine but i just don't listen to clicks podcast a lot anymore just because i do my own and they're just talking about the same stuff i'm talking about really um but i really like the episode where they talked about the quinjet because I didn't play Age of Ultron because I didn't have a venue. But I was like, dude, the Quinjet is so incredibly meta. I want to try to put this on a team. And obviously my team would be different than, than theirs, whatever it was. But they also said, dude, this Quinjet is meta. People need to play it. Why are people disregarding it? And then it was like that episode, I vibed with it so hard. Because I'm like, thank you. That's what I've been trying to say. But obviously I have no one to say it to because I'm by myself in the middle of South Dakota at the time. So... Yeah, that was a great episode. I'm trying to think of another really just uh, hilarious episode. There's this great episode of ClicksCast where I think it was their character review. They do Captain America. That was one of my favorites just because obviously they were talking about Captain America. So that would be my three-ish favorite episodes of a podcast. Okay, um, so I actually really liked doing um, the episodes for our award ceremony. I thought those yeah. were really fun. I really enjoyed that. But Umbrella Speaking – any of our episodes where you hear me laughing a lot in the background, those are my favorite episodes because that means that I was actually having fun doing it. Um, I don't take the game that seriously, which I'm, I'm going to branch off and do a tangent here in a second. Really more of like a question. I'm not trying to like throw shade on a bunch of people or anything, but it's a, it's a legitimate question. Um, but any of those episodes where it just sounds like I'm having fun, those are legitimately like I love those episodes. I like doing them. Um, when we did the episode, uh, I think was that last episode or two episodes ago with uh, Superfan Christian Bogan. Oh yeah, like, like we had a lot of fun did. doing we that did. episode. And like if those are the type of episodes that I really like doing. Question: Like I just said, I don't really like take the game that seriously, but I know a lot of people out there do. And there's a podcast out there, and I, I don't want to name the podcast just because in case they think that I'm throwing shade at them. But what does it mean when you label your own podcast as an adult hero clicks podcast? Like, what does that I don't mean? Know. Like, I don't know, is, man. It, is that like trying to throw shade at like all the other podcasts? Like, oh, they don't take it seriously. No, I, I like, wouldn't say that. that. I would say it's just like they swear and are a little raunchy. Is all I would say is what that means. You know, adult. It just okay. means like. It, we might be a little inappropriate and say some things like that. I definitely don't think that means they're better than anyone. Oh, you man. Know? So <laughs> if, you, if you meet Calder and, uh, and I in real life, we swear like sa- like sailors. In real I life. try not to so bad. <laughs> All you have to do to stop me from saying like any swear word is like, hey, dude, don't swear. And then I won't for like the rest yeah. of the world. Like I'm, I'll, I'll totally accept it. But if it's to make a joke slightly funnier, just like a comedian, well, I'll, I'll throw in a swear word. And I'm sorry if that like ruins a lot of people. Like, ah, oh, man. I'm like, but if you knew, if you knew my father, and if you know what it's like working cattle, you swear a ton. You just you do. Animals are the yeah. worst. So, and, and if you knew like what I did for a living, oh yeah, like, knowing that I'm going into the military and stuff like that, like, that's just kind of the person I am. But Colin and I, we wear different hats. So like when we're doing the podcast. We just don't do that because that's what we choose to do. And I honestly like, prefer not swearing on a podcast. I, I think it makes it better in a way. I, I know I don't like swearing on a podcast, but that's just me. Well, I know that we've gotten a lot of uh, like messages from the past from like parents. Oh, yeah. have been like, like, hey, just to let you know, really appreciate you guys not swearing. And I know that 
I don't have to pre-screen an episode before I let my li- kids listen to it. They can just they just know that if they sit down to listen to it, it's already going to be like pre-censored because right, for sure. can just do that. So yeah, I mean that's cool. I like that we we make other people happy like that. Yeah, absolutely. So this one, I'm so happy we talked about that for a while because I have to think a little bit about some of these um, top three guests on your podcast. You go. I mean, I can go because um, I'm thinking about it. Okay, so we haven't had him on in a while, and I'm pretty sure that he stopped playing Hero Clicks. But uh, super fan Seth Aaron was like, oh, I always stole one. Him. nice." Stole him. He was always just one of my favorite people to like have on the podcast because what you guys don't know is that we would talk before the podcast and after the podcast, and I swear to God, there were like times where, we, yeah, we'd get done recording. And then we'd still be on Skype for like an hour. Oh, yeah. It was just like the kind of the kind of dude you can just sit down and you can like shoot the crap with like for an hour just talking and stuff. That is definitely one of my favorite ones. Uh, Chris Kurtz, I always enjoy talking uh, to Chris Kurtz as well. He's just a really really good dude. And then um, recently, honestly, is super fan Christian Bogan. Like yeah, he, oh dude, for I, sure. I don't think now. I know that you know Christian Bogan in real life. But yes. I never met Christian Bogan in real life, and it was just really fun. Like it was, it was really cool. Oh, another thing. I don't know if we mentioned this on that episode, but like he's like so devout to our our podcast in the in the Dial H <sighs> community. It's amazing. Thank you. That he's like going out and sitting in his car to record with us in like the freezing temperatures in Michigan, just so he can be there with us to record. And he's like genuinely excited about it. So like we saw his face cause he had his camera going and like the happiness on this man's face yeah. made me so happy. And like, this is why I do this podcast is because of that. Yeah, no. Um, see still two of my, uh, my picks though for super fan, it was both super fans. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make it different. Um, I really like all the podcasts that we have Jamie, Jamie on James Peters from Mr. Clicks Flix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love having him on. That's awesome. Um, one of the few podcasts I wasn't on, I really enjoyed Chance McCall as a guest. The guy was hilarious. He did a really good job. Um, kind of sucked as I did. Cut, would cut out sometimes, but I really liked Chance as a guest. He was hilarious. Um, and I'm, I was trying to think of this guy's name, but he smoked me in Bad Samaritan. It wasn't super fan Luke has been a lot. I hate that guy. I hate seeing him everywhere. Um, <laughs> just, I kid, I kid. But there's uh, this, uh, this one other guy, and I feel so bad that I can't remember his name just because it was so long ago. He got, honestly, we have had so like the opportunity, and it's really a privilege, is what it is. It to is interact with so many wonderful members of our community, like bringing him onto the podcast. It, it's been so cool. So if, if we didn't name you specifically, don't think that we don't appreciate no. yeah. everything that you've done for the podcast. If you've Just, ever been on the show, if you've ever answered any of our community Tuesdays questions, if you've ever sent us an email, if any of that kind of stuff, like it is so appreciated. Yeah. All of it, yeah. The one WKO sealed winner, that guy was I, – I feel bad again. I can't remember his name, but he was a really fun guy to have on the show. So those those are like my top-ish, three-ish guests. You know, it was obviously more, but those were great. Uh, we, still, we still have two more questions. Top three powers and abilities that you like, Chris, go. I love hypersonic speed. I love outwit. I've always just – has always been really, really good for me. And then lastly, most important for me, because like I said, my luck is – God awful. Probability control. Every team. Every team oh, nice. has probability control. Uh, shape change for sure. Leadership for sure. I really can't think of a last one. I don't know. I'm just going to throw out. Let's just keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Sidestep. Sure. Um, this is the last one. This is just random top three things that you like about Heroclix, about Heroclix that you enjoy. I really love when WizKids actually – uses the source material like actual panels from the comics and makes them into sculpts i think that is fantastic so cool to me um i love colossal hero clicks so much uh like anytime i look at the serpent which harkens back to that first answer right there pulled from the comics amazing the fact that they made it a colossal amazing that's so that's two things and another thing is the best thing about hero clicks honest to god is the community yeah uh, mine is su- pseudo what Chris said, the community. I met so many people in this game that I just love talking to, that I've loved playing with, playing against, whatever. 
but I would have never met these people ever in my entire life if we didn't all play a stupid little chess game that uses superheroes. Like, if we didn't play Hero Clicks, I wouldn't know so many people, and I wouldn't have had these laughs and good times and whatever. So, once again, that's another vote for the community. Another one is, I like it because it's little miniatures that I play a game with. I love collecting action figures. This melds them beautifully together. It was action figures and board games. Pow, I need to play Hero Clicks. It's awesome. The last oh, one is... Okay, wait, you go. Last thing, no, you last do thing it. that you I love... This has only happened once, but it was so awesome to me. When people make Dial H memes is the oh, funniest man. thing ever to me. I cannot remember who it is. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. But it was like a Dial H positivity was like the, the meme. It was, it was so funny to me. So I really like that. Dude, and the last thing I love about it is uh, how much money I get to spend on it. Yeah, no, that's totally it, 100%. <laughs> I, I get a lot of that. I spend so much money on a hobby that I truly, truly love and enjoy. It is just fun, pure fun, and I love it. That's what I love about it. So that is – these are all of Malcolm's questions. I love the rapid-fire aspect of it. Like I saw it. It instantly goes to the bottom on mobile, and I'm like, oh, no, what was it? I, I saw there was something at the top, and it's like, don't read it. I'm like, oh, okay, I won't read them. Fine. So that was great. I seriously love these questions. These are some of the best ones, these rapid-fire styles. So thank you, Malcolm, for the questions. Uh, thank you, everybody, who listened this far into the crazy craziness uh, that was this. So, uh, yeah. Man, I, I feel said, like that was a lot of, a lot of rambling. Oh, it was, <laughs> dude. It was. A, supposed to be like rapid fire. That was not rapid fire. No, it wasn't. All right. We, well, we didn't make it so. Oh, uh, whatever. Uh, people, people keep listening to us. I'm yeah. not sure why. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Love you. Um, okay, so if you want to write in, like Malcolm or any of the people uh, that send us stuff, you can do that on Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks on Facebook. On Twitter, we are at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four. Uh, you can send us an email. We get those from time to time. Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. Send us things. It helps fill uh, our loneliness throughout the week because Calder's surrounded by cows and. I'm not lonely. It's just called her. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's my favorite thing about Heroclix is just giving you crap every week is what I, that's what gives, that's what, can I just answer that as sure. like what makes me happy making every, fun of happy every, every single week? Just making fun of Calder. <laughs> every week. Jeez. Yeah. Just, okay, to, just to say it again. Every week. Folks. <laughs> every week. Whatever. When I'm gone, you're going to miss it. I'm going to miss him so you have no idea. I'm going to cry. Not really going to cry, but like still, I'm going to Maybe I'll cry. I probably will. I'll shed a tear or two. I'm going to miss Chris so much. You I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I think, does that wrap us up for the week? Is, yeah, I think we're good. This is the show. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, as a reminder, we got a Redbubble store. You can get t-shirts, you can get mugs, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. I personally need to know, I need to make a few more designs and put them up there. But I, I, I love the Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy shirt. It's just a really easy way for us to make our own merch without having to talk to someone and having them print off a million shirts or whatever. Instead, you just order Redbubble stuff whenever. So if you want to get a cool Dial H logo, something simple like a sticker to put on your thing, or if you want the cool Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy design, check those out at Redbubble store. It's always linked in the podcast show notes. And as a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Does our theme song ever get stuck in your head? I, I'll, I'll say m m m money style sometimes. I think it's awesome. <laughs> sometimes it gets stuck in my head. I'm just. Saying. Dude, it's great.